Hi everyone, my name is Grant Kay and welcome to the 8th part of the video series on how to use Action, Autodesk Smoke's main 3D compositor. In the previous video, we carried on enhancing the layers from the Photoshop file, we then positioned them in 3D space, as well as added a bit of animation. Let's continue tweaking the graphic circle animation and then we'll animate the 3D camera as well as import in that fabulous 3D model. Scrubbing through the time bar, we can see that the animations for the inner and outer circle are the same. We would like the animation for the inner circle to actually go in the opposite direction. This can all be achieved through tweaking the animation channels. In the schematic view displayed on the left, we will select the inner circle axis. To the left of the interface is an animation button. Clicking on this button switches the menus to the animation channels. This is the animation channel editor and it comprises of a graph in the middle of the interface and the animation channels to the left. There is also a scroll bar in between the graph and the channels. The white highlight in the scroll bar indicates the selected object and its channels in the composite. So if we were to grab the scroll bar and pull it downwards, we will see the selected objects and channels. Clicking on the expansion triangles expands the channels. Expanding the rotation reveals the animation curve for the inner circle spin. There is plenty we can do in terms of animation and please refer to the animation videos for more detailed explanations. In this case, we will simply select the Z rotation channel and choose the reverse option located to the right of the graph. You can see how the curve has now reversed itself and when we scrub the time bar again, you can see how the circles now go in opposite directions. Click the animation button to return back to the interface and the main menus. Let's finish off the graphics by blending it with the rest of the composite. In the schematic view on the left, double click on the image object of the inner circle to bring up its image object menu. In the image menu to the bottom right of the interface, we can see that the image object is using the Photoshop blend type because this was originally imported in as a layered Photoshop file. All of these settings can be changed and in this case we will change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Select the outer circle image object in the schematic and we will perform the same operation to change its blend mode to overlay as well. So you can see how well objects in the composite can come together. Now let's take real advantage of the fully functioning 3D environment. We looked at lighting earlier in the series, but this time we are going to be looking at the 3D camera. As I said in an earlier video, each action composite has a camera and this composite is no exception. Select the action schematic view. Change the view mode using the pop-up menu at the bottom left of the interface. We'll change the view mode from schematic to top view. Alternatively, you can press the hotkeys Shift 4 on the keyboard. Using the navigation controls to the right of the interface, we can zoom out of the top view so that we can see the composite as well as the camera. Select the camera by double-clicking on the camera icon. This brings up the camera's controls in the object menu. The camera can be adjusted in many ways, but there are actually two modes. The first mode is called the target mode. This means you can have a camera with a dedicated interest point that the camera revolves around. The second mode is the free mode. The camera can now move freely around the composite without a targeted point. 
this is a great mode for doing fly-throughs. However, for this example, we will use a target mode which will give us a much more controlled camera animation. We'll just return back to frame 1 of the composite and we can reset the camera by pressing the reset button located in the camera's object controls. Now remember that auto key should still be on. Firstly, we'll reposition the camera to the side of the composite. We'll also move the camera's target so that it is aligned with the outer circle. We'll now navigate to frame 25 in the composite by entering in the value to the left of the player controls. Holding down the control hotkey on the keyboard, we can then start clicking through the camera sliders for the eye values as well as the interest values. This operation keyframes each channel at the current frame and also resets each of the channels to their default values. This works for all slider channels and is a very quick way to keyframe animations of objects moving from other places to their default positions and values within the composite. If we scrub the time bar once again, we can see the effect of the camera animation. We can see this updating through the camera view on the right and the top view on the left of the interface. So looking at this animation, it appears that we're starting to reach a creative boundary in 3D space. This is simply because our Tech Talk logo is flat and practically boring. Let's break down this imaginary boundary by replacing the flat Tech Talk logo with a 3D model version. Let's change to the Node Bin menu. In the Node Bin, double click on the Import node, which will launch us back to the file browser. On the bottom left of the screen, we will change the file type to FBX. The FBX file type enables us to move 3D data in and out of smoke as well as other 3D applications that support the format. In this case, the Tech Talk logo is on the desktop of my Mac. We can use the navigation menus to browse through the file system to the desktop. Alternatively, if you have a bookmark, we can simply just click on that as well. When we select the FBX, it automatically loads itself into the Action 3D composite. Using the schematic view, we can pan over to the newly imported nodes to see the model. Straight away, we can also grab the image object of the flat Tech Talk logo and drag it to the bottom of the interface, which effectively deletes it. And just by adding a bit of extra animation, we can change the whole impact of the composite. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to frame 30 of the composition. Double click on the Logo 1 node of the 3D model in the schematic. In the object menu, we'll adjust the Y rotation slider to minus 25 degrees, and that means we can see the model from a slightly different angle. Now moving forward just a few frames, we can animate the Y rotation to a value of 15 degrees. One last thing to do. If you see any strange looking artifacts or objects that are not drawing correctly, then it is probably the priority editor that needs a quick adjustment. Swipe downwards on the interface and in the priority editor, press the Z sort button. This will order the objects correctly according to their depth in 3D space. Swipe down again to return to the previous menu. Once more, scrubbing through the time bar, we can see what a big difference a 3D model can make in a composite and just how easy it is to add into our 3D composite. Now don't panic that I didn't show you the way to set up the 3D model and export it as an FBX from your 3D package. 
This topic and more is covered on the Smoke Learning Channel. All I wanted to do was show you how easy it was to import a 3D model into the scene. In the next video, we're going to carry on tweaking that 3D model as well as start to go through some of the preparations before we do the final render. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or if you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.